I was panning out some uh, gold concentrates I crushed out of some iron ore today when I was noticing a real neat effect of the metal sulfides floating on the water. I thought I'd make a video to show you guys uh, this neat effect and the patterns it'll make in the water and talk a little bit about the dangers and the usefulness of this property. Uh, in this case, this is iron sulfide or iron pyrite uh, being panned out here. There is gold in the bottom there, but the iron is what's doing the floating at this point. Both iron sulfide, copper sulfide, many of the sulfides, uh, and gold will float on water because it's hydrophobic. It doesn't like water. It's not easily wetted. And what happens is because it doesn't like the water, it sort of sheds the water and then it floats on the meniscus or the surface tension of that water. And I was just panning away today and uh, noticed lots of the iron pirates coming to the surface, so brought out the camera and filmed a little bit of it. And right now I'm just playing with the effect. I'm shaking it up so that the iron sulfides will touch the air. And as it touches the air, it jumps to the surface of the water. And you can get quite a bit of it happening if you really shake it hard and just get a lot of it touching that air. Then it floats out and stays in neat patterns on the surface. And it'll stay on the surface for a long time unless something, will, something goes and sinks it. Gold will do the same thing. You see gold's floating on the surface of your water. All you have to do is touch it or shake it real hard, and it will sink back down to the bottom. The uh, iron sulfides and the gold are quite heavy, even way heavier than water, but the surface tension of that water is enough to hold it up on the surface. Once it's underneath the surface, it sinks right to the bottom and acts like any other heavy metal. There's a whole pan of iron sulfides floating. We'll leave it long enough and it all congregates in one spot, little islands of floating metal. That's a lot of gold, Dad. That's not gold. <laughs> That's iron sulfide floating on water. This? Metal actually oh. floating on top of water. Very cool, eh? Now I said this uh, effect has its benefits and drawbacks. Well, the drawback is uh, that gold will do the same thing. And if you're not careful, if you don't uh, wet your material, or if you let air touch the gold, it'll float. And it can float out of your pan, out of your sluice, out of your blue bowl or miller table, and just float right away. So that's why we always make sure that we wet our cons before we add them. And we always, uh, when we're putting material into our sluice or our pans, we make sure that it's nice and wet before it gets that chance to move away on us. The benefit of this is uh, in mining, they use this effect to separate materials in uh, what they call flotation cells. They bubble water or froth water through the material, and they can add just the right cocktail worth of chemicals in there and have specific materials float up to the surface and then they can skim them off and either skim them off and keep them if that's what they want or skim them off and throw them away if they want to get it out of their concentrates. To watch out because uh, gold will float the same way the sulfides and uh, here's a zooming in on a section here where I can actually see two little specks of floating gold zooming way in all you see is pixels of it really really fine gold. In this picture here there are three pieces of gold Two of them are floating up with the sulfides and one down on the bottom. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned something along the way. Thank you for watching.